Welcome back to the course on computer network and uh, internet protocols. So, in the last classes, we are, di dis uh, we are uh, discussing about uh, this uh, software defined networking concept. Uh, so, today we will see the implementation of a software defined architecture, software defined networking architecture and uh, uh, in a network emulator platform called Mininet. And we are talking about this uh, open flow protocol. So, we will see that uh, how you can utilize this open flow protocol on top of a mini net architecture uh, to send or receive packets or to emulate a network topology uh, inside your computer. Uh, so, let us have our journey on this uh, mini net and uh, open flow controllers. Uh, so, till now we have earlier looked into different uh, socket programming aspects. Uh, so, you can actually in mini net you can run all these different uh, socket programming and see that the packets are actually traversing in the network. Now, uh, to capture the packets uh, in the internet, we have a nice uh, traffic analysis tool called Wireshark. So, let me first show you a demo of this uh, Wireshark and uh, see how you can uh, actually capture the packets and analyze individual packets in the network. So, here there is this uh, uh, Wireshark interface. Uh, so, let me just open it from the scratch, so that the things become uh, easier for you. So, uh, we open the Wireshark uh, tool. So, in that Wireshark tool, this is the Wireshark uh, home screen. Okay. So, here you can see all the interfaces which are there uh, in this machine, where you will be able to uh, capture the packets. Now, this particular machine it is connected to the wireless LAN uh, in uh, uh, here you can see it is connected to this uh, academic uh, SSID uh, to the Wi-Fi router. Uh, so, we use uh, this WLAN 0 interface where it is receiving some packet here you can see that there is a small graph which is going on. So, it basically uh, capture the packets uh, which are there. So, let us uh, start capturing the packet in WLAN 0 interface. So, here it is uh, capturing the packets in WLAN 0 interface. Uh, so, uh, we will open some website. So, let us refresh this Google website or go to the Gmail website, so that we can get certain packets. Now, come back to the Wireshark stop the Wireshark interface and here you can see all the packets. So, you can see there are lots of packets where the protocol field. So, here we have the protocol field, the protocol field is GVSP. So, this GVSP is uh, something called the uh, uh, GIE vision protocol, which is used in uh, uh, team viewer kind of application, which currently I am using for recording. Uh, so, it is capturing lot of, lots of such packets at uh, GVSP kind of packet. It should also capture certain uh, TCP packets. So, here is some TCP packets you can see. Uh, so, here are the TCP packets. Uh, now, whenever you are selecting one of these uh, packets. So, let me choose uh, one packet here. So, the protocol it shows as TLS version 1.2, which is the uh, transport layer security uh, encrypted TLS encrypted packet. So, the Google whenever it sends the packet over the TCP protocol, it uses TLS uh, to ensure the security at the transport layer. Now, inside this packet, uh, if you look into this second window, this second window actually gives you uh, the packet details at the different layer. So, this is a nice way to visualize the uh, five layers of the TCP IP protocol stack. So, here uh, let us uh, start looking into again this uh, top down approach the way we are following the course. Uh, so, here you can see that you have this SSL packet which is the encrypted data bits that we have. Uh, after that we have this uh, HTTP header. So, in that HTTP header we are connecting uh, to a proxy it just contains the proxy information because the packets that we are sending from this machine it is sent to a uh, HTTP proxy server and from that HTTP proxy server it is going to Google. So, the packet which is sending to Google it is inside that secure socket layer, that layer which is the encrypted data. Uh, so, you can see that it contains this application data protocol. Uh, it says about HTTP over TLS. Uh, so, 
here it gives the uh, application data the TLS version 1.2 the length and the encrypted application data. So, this is the encrypted part of the application data. So, there are three different uh, TLS record blocks. Uh, so, the entire data is divided into three different TLS blocks and that contains the entire application data. Then this uh, HTTP uh, extension which uh, contains the proxy information. Then we have the transmission control protocol or the TCP port. So, you can see that the TCP details are there. So, here my source port is uh, 8080, the destination TCP port is 54768. Uh, the stream index is uh, something like uh, 1, the single stream, the segment length, it contains the TCP sequence number uh, that uh, we have seen for the transmission control protocol, the next sequence number, the acknowledgement number and the header line length, certain uh, TCP flags. Uh, so, in the TCP header there were multiple flags, so those flag bits are here, the window size, the receiver advertised window size and accordingly the calculated window size and the checksum field, the urgent pointer, uh, then the TCP option field uh, and uh, the sequence and the acknowledgement uh, field. Uh, then uh, you can look into the IP header, uh, the next header is the IP header, inside the IP header you can see that the source address and the destination address. Now, the source address that I have 172.16.2.30 that is the IP of the proxy uh, address that we have in our IIT Kharagpur network and the destination address is 10.146.58.130 that is the address of this machine. So, uh, if you if you just try to see the IP of this machine you can see that say uh, so, in the Ethernet address, the loopback address, well. So, here you can see that the WLAN address is it is connected to the wireless LAN interface. So, the address is 10.146.58.130 the address of this machine. So, here also uh, the destination address is 10.146.58.130 the address of this machine. So, the packet has been received from the uh, HTTP proxy that we have IIT in IIT Kharagpur to this machine uh, and the different field in the uh, IP header. Uh, so, the IP header length, the flag bits uh, in the IP header, the fragmentation information, then the upper layer protocol. So, it is using TCP protocol, uh, then the source destination, uh, uh, this uh, IP layer header information. Then you have this uh, Ethernet uh, information. Uh, so, the Ethernet information you can see from here and finally, the link layer information. So, the data link layer has two subparts: the logical link control and the MAC. So, this frame uh, information that is coming from the MAC and this Ethernet information coming from the LLC. Uh, it contains the packet arrival time, the epoch time, uh, the frame length uh, and different other fields uh, which are uh, there uh, to indicate the link layer information. That way using Wireshark you can actually look into uh, different type of packets. Uh, say for example, you can see that this is a TCP SYN packet. So, it is marked as a SYN. So, if you look into the TCP header for this packet, well uh, yeah the TCP header. So, if you look into the TCP header for that packet, you can see that the SYN bit is set. So, it is basically a SYN packet to uh, initialize the TCP connection. So, you can see that uh, a scene is so here you can see uh, interestingly the TCP 3 way handshaking mechanism. So, uh, the scene packet has been sent uh, with sequence number 0 and uh, certain window size, then you can see a scene act, then uh, followed by another act. So, this 3 way handshaking is happening here. So, that way using this Wireshark tool you can actually capture all the packets which is uh, coming in your machine and uh, you can analyze them, you can see what are the different packets coming to your machine and 
how to process those packets, look into different header fields at a different layer of the protocol stack and explore it uh, further. Okay, so that is a brief uh, idea about how you can do the packet analysis uh, using Wireshark. Uh, okay, so next uh, we'll look into that how you can emulate a computer network in a single machine. So that is the emulator platform, uh, which is again a SDN based tool uh, that we are going to discuss in little details. Uh, so in computer network, the best way to learn a computer network is experimenting it on the existing network. Uh, sir, that is uh, always. So, if you run your own protocol, if you say design a protocol, implement it and make a run on a uh, on your uh, network. So, that is the best way to do. Uh, but uh, the problem is that ex this kind of existing network, it may not be available for everyone. So, to get access to an existing network is a difficult thing. Uh, so, sometime it may happen that you have a limited access to the network. For example, we have certain limited access in IIT Kharagpur network, you cannot run anything over the IIT Kharagpur network because it is a, a public network. And if you want to design your private network or want to set up your private network, uh, it is expensive to make a setup of your uh, private network. So, uh, that is why what we do, we try to emulate a network topology in a computer. So, there are multiple simulation platform which has been used historically to understand the behavior of a computer network, but simulation platform has many limitation because it is not using the exact uh, protocol stack which is running inside your machine. So, that is why many of the time a simulated network does not give you an uh, ideal information about uh, how your protocol can perform in a real environment. But on the other hand, the emulated network has that capacity. So, in a case of a emulated network, the difference from the simulated network is that you are not simulating in, in a hypothetical or a virtual environment. Rather, what you are doing? You are utilizing the network protocol stack, the implementation inside the kernel itself, the actual implementation which is going to run in a real network and on that emulated platform, you are testing that how the performance of your network is going to be. So, uh, the advantage is that uh, it is independent of the existing network and it can be set up as required. Okay. Now, here are the different parts or different components of computer networks uh, in a physical network. So, you have the routers, you have the switches, you have different host and the server and you have the link. Now, in a virtual domain or an emulated domain, whenever we are emulating it using this Mininet platform. So, we call Mininet as a network inside a computer, uh, a emulated network inside a computer. So, these routers, uh, these routers are implemented using called something called a virtual namespace for legacy network or open vSwitch for software different, different network. So, open vSwitch is a, a tool chain which uh, provide a switch implementation in a open platform, uh, open platform or open source platform. You have uh, that open vSwitch implementation and using open vSwitch, you can emulate a switch using the uh, kernel protocol stack which is there in your Linux operating system. Then a switch can again be emulated using an open vSwitch platform. Uh, host can be emulated using a virtual namespace. A namespace is basically an uh, instance of the protocol stack uh, which uh, works like an individual host. So, uh, you have this entire protocol stack implementation inside your computer. Now, you are creating a virtual instance of that protocol stack and uh, emulating it at, as an individual host. So, this entire architecture you can just think of the way we do the operating system level virtualization. So, I think that uh, you have heard about this kind of virtual machine and the tools like virtual box. So, in a tool like virtual box what we do, we do the operating system level virtualization. So, you have this virtual box on top of you can have multiple VMs which are running and inside every VM you can run uh, one different operating system. So, one VM can host a Ubuntu operating system, another VS VM can host a uh, say Windows operating system, a third VM can host a Fedora operating system and all these things can run on top of a host operating system. In a similar way, here we are emulating the network using this virtual namespace and a virtual switch concept where the network protocol stack implementation is there inside your kernel and we are creating a virtualized instance of that protocol stack. So, whenever you are creating constructing a virtual host, 
that means you are creating you are taking a virtual instance of the entire tcp ip protocol stack of the five layers and considering it as a virtual namespace so the term namespace actually indicates a virtual instance of this end to end protocol stack so you are taking a virtual instance of that and considering it as an uh, as an uh, individual host now if you are going to implement a switch or a router then at the layer 3 of the protocol stack you need to run the routing functionalities or at layer 2 of the protocol stack you have to run the switching functionalities or layer 2 functionalities so that you can implement with the help of this open v switch so the open v switch will adapt the virtual switching uh, switching functionalities or the routing functionalities on top of that uh, namespace the protocol stack namespace and then you can emulate the links the physical links using virtual links now uh, this is a kind of a simple computer network in the physical domain you have one host which is running a browser like firefox it is connected to a network switch or a router that is again connected to a http server so using the browser you can browse the data from the http server now the same thing you can implement inside a single machine so here you have your linux kernel in that linux kernel you have this open v switch kernel module uh, which uh, runs the uh, switching functionalities by taking a virtualized instance of the tcp ip protocol stack and then you have two different namespaces host namespaces so these two different host namespaces again have a virtual instance of this uh, five layers of the tcp ip protocol stack and they are in the application side you are running a firefox then you have a linux kernel which has this virtual implementation of the protocol stack and then the ethernet 0 which is a virtual link which is connected to this open v switch kernel module so it is connected with this uh, logical switch or the virtual switch and, and the other host namespace you have a http server running at the application and the remaining part of the protocol stack along with the virtual link uh, through this eth 0 which is uh, being connected so that way the physical network you can implement uh, in a machine using this uh, virtual instance uh, uh, instances of the network so now uh, how you can create such kind of uh, topologies in a network in a computer uh, we can use the mininet tool i will show you a demo of that mininet tool but before going to that just showing you some simple commands inside the mininet tool so this mininet tool you can uh, this is an open source tool you can install it from uh, the mininet website uh, so from the mininet website you can even get uh, the image under different kind of operating system or you can also get the source you can compile it from the source and install it to your linux based machine so in the mininet command if you type the command like mn mn is corresponds to the mininet minus minus topo single to what it will do it will create a topology like this uh, it will have a single instance of the switch and two different host so if you make it mn minus minus topo single tree then uh, you have a single switch with three different host if you make it as mn minus minus topo linear tree it will create a linear topology of the three switches and one host will connect to it each of the switch so uh, this is the topology corresponds to that and then if you want to create say a complicated topology so here what we are doing that we are creating a topology like um, this uh, linear 2 3 and this is a kind of hdn topology that we are going to implement in the last lecture we have discussed about this hdn architecture we have the switches and the switches are connected to a uh, controller so that thing we are going to emulate here using this uh, hdn uh, uh, mini net networking platform so what we are going to do we are having this mn minus minus topo linear 2 3 linear 2 3 means you have a linear topology of two switches which are being connected and three hosts are connected to it every individual switches and then we are specifying minus minus controller equal to remote that means we are having a controller uh, which is there in a remote machine and that controller is connected to the switches now in that controller you have to load uh, individual uh, controller software so in the last class we are discussing that there can be multiple such controller platforms like um, Ryu, uh, like that pox like open daylight like floodlight there are different kind of controllers you can pick up your favorite controllers and attach it with this uh, virtual controller that you are designing and uh, then with that virtual controller we, you can actually uh, try to uh, do the experiments uh, by setting up by writing your code inside the controller by writing your network application inside the controller and then running it over this uh, kind of emulated network so 
now let us uh, go for a demo of this uh, entire procedure. So, uh, what uh, we are going to do is first uh, we So, so uh, first we will uh, run a mininet instance uh, with uh, we create a topology of uh, a single switch and uh, three different hosts. So, let us do it sudo mn minus minus topo. So, you have to run it using the sudo instances because it run as a root. You are going to access the kernel protocol stack. Uh, so, that is you require the root access single comma three the way I have shown you earlier like uh, we have a single switch with uh, three different host connected to that switch. Then um, minus minus mac minus minus controller remote minus minus switch OVSK. So, here it says that uh, I am going to have a controller which is going to connect it with the switch and those switch are of type uh, OVSK switches. So, I have to give the root password. Oh, sorry I have made a typo here it should be controller. Okay. Now, you can see here uh, what has happened first whenever it is trying to add the controller, uh, it was not able to con contact the remote controller at the local machine. So, we are saying that we are going to uh, run the controller in the local machine. So, the controller normally runs in uh, two different uh, out of the uh, two different ports 6653 or 6633. Uh, so, it is searching for the controller, but currently we have not executed any controller. So, it was not able to find the controller and it has added uh, three different host H1, H2 and H3 and added a switches called S1 and the links are H1 to S1, H2 to S1 and H3 to S1 a kind of start topology. So, three hosts are connected to one switch. So, it has configured the three host started the controller, but the controller it was not able to connect and one switch has been started. So, now you got the mininet console here. Now, from that mininet console, if you try to say uh, ping something, so we make the command as h1 ping h2. So, whenever we write h1 ping h2, that means uh, from the uh, virtual namespace of h1, the protocol stack which is there, the virtual protocol stack which is there, from there we are going to execute the ping command and we are trying to ping the host h2. So, here if you try to ping it, you can see that it is not getting pinged. Uh, so, it says that uh, the destination host is unreachable. Similarly, if you try to ping um, uh, from say H2 ping H3, uh, none of the machines will uh, uh, get pinged. Uh, it says destination host unreachable. Now, let us run the controller. So, what uh, we will do? under this uh, mini net directory we have we are going to use the review controller. So, uh, we are going to the directory review and starting the controller. So, OVS VSCTL. So, this OVS VSCTL command is used to uh, start a controller and attach it with a corresponding OVS switch uh, set bridge. We are trying to set the controller in the bridge mode uh, it, and it will be connected with S1. So, S1 is going to work as a bridge mode uh, with which the controller is uh, getting connected. Uh, then protocols equal to open flow 1 3. So, we are specifying that uh, we are going to use open flow version 1.3 at my protocol. Okay, SMRL. So the password. Uh, now uh, we are going to start 
the controller. So, what we have done here we have uh, with this uh, OVS VSCTL command uh, with this S1 which is working as the bridge mode uh, with that we have configured it with this open flow version 1.3 protocol stack. Now, we are going to run the uh, switch uh, run the controller. So, to run the controller we are going to review manager going to run review manager uh, in the verbose mode. So, that we can see what is going to happen here and the controller program that we are going to run. So, on the controller you have to run certain application. So, that application will take care of uh, configuring your switches that we have learned in the last class. Uh, it will configure the switch and it will install the forwarding rules inside that switch. So, here we have written a python script. Uh, which is actually a default python script uh, used inside the Ryu controller and that python script actually works like application of uh, forwarding manager. It helps you to forward the packet from one machine to another machine. So, we are going to run that one. Uh, it is simple switch uh, with version 13 dot py. So, that is the python application which we have written or indeed it was a default application in Ryu. Uh, once you install Ryu, you can uh, get that at, uh, as well. Uh, so, uh, that particular application we are going to run here. Okay. So, it has executed that one and uh, uh, after that it has uh, getting connected with the corresponding switch. Now, let us try to run it H 1 ping H 2. Now, you can see it is getting pinged okay? and when it is getting pinged let us look into few events which are happening here. Here you can see there was some event which has been locked. So, this event uh, you can see certain packets are coming to the controller and uh, based on that packet uh, it, is, it is configuring the corresponding switches. So, the controller events are being logged here and uh, here it is getting pinged and we have an interesting observation here. If you look into the response time of the switches, so you can see that the first packet uh, that was sent it has a longer time, it, it has taken a time of 4.84 millisecond whereas, the remaining ping packet it has took around 0 0.16 millisecond then 0 0.03 millisecond, 0 0.03 millisecond something like that, but the first one has taken certain more time. Why that is so? If you remember in the last class that I have discussed that how this entire controller architecture is going to work for the first packet whenever it reaches to the switch, the switch does not have any information about how to process that packet or how to forward that packet. So, what the switch has done? The switch will send or generate a open flow event which will reach to the controller. So, the event we can see in the other tab the open flow event that have been generated. So, this open flow events will be generated and it will be uh, sent uh, to the corresponding switch and uh, then that particular switch will uh, 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 send that event to the corresponding controller the Ryu controller application that we are running. Uh, so, that particular application the switching application it will generate the rules and configure the switch with that particular rule and then the packet will get forwarded. And during that in between time the packet will remain uh, inside uh, the buffer of the switch. So, for the initial packet we see a certain longer delay for, but for the remaining packet the delays are less. Again if I run it uh, you can see that uh, the delays is comparatively less and only for the first time it has took that uh, initial longer time. Similarly, now in this case if I run it in a different case, so earlier I have done H1 ping H2, now say run it from the H2 host. So, if we run the ping from H2 host through uh, H3, again you can see that the first packet has took some longer time uh, to uh, forward the things. Uh, so, that way you can actually run uh, this entire uh, uh, controller and the switches and emulate the topology uh, by using this uh, mini net uh, emulator network emulator platform. Now, briefly and you can see here that all these events have again executed uh, uh, for uh, different nodes. Uh, now, 
let us look into the application that uh, we had written in python. So, I will quickly show you the application which is there uh, app. So, inside the app directory you can see that there are multiple applications which are there. So, you can actually uh, play with uh, these applications which are there and then start writing your uh, own application using this uh, python programming. So, simple switch one tree dot pi ok. So, here uh, what we basically do uh, a simple switch 13 class has been defined and inside that we are defining uh, different functionalities the initial fun initialized functionalities the a switch feature handler which handle different features uh, uh, inside the switch. Uh, and then the interesting part is this uh, add flow uh, thing. So, this add flow will add a new rule uh, corresponds to a new flow. Uh, so, what it will do? Uh, so, uh, this add flow uh, it will call this packet in handler. So, this packet in handler actually handle uh, one open flow packet. So, whenever a packet in event occurs that means, uh, a packet is waiting at the switch and uh, you have received that. Um, uh, packet in event at the controller side. So, what we are actually doing? So, you can see that we are extracting the port, uh, we are extracting the packet parameters, the packet equal to packet uh, message dot data, then the Ethernet header from the Ethernet type, uh, we are looking into the type and then we are taking the source address and the destination address uh, from the Ethernet interface. Uh, we are looking into the data part ID and then generating the forwarding rule. So, here the forwarding rules are generated. Uh, so, uh, we are learning the MAC address. So, here we are doing the forwarding. So, the forwarding is done via the MAC address. In the latter lecture, you will learn how to how you can use MAC address for do the forwarding. Uh, so, this forwarding rules are being generated. So, uh, based on that uh, we are generating the output port. So, where the packet will be forwarded net and accordingly the action has been defined and then uh, we are installing a new rule uh, to uh, in uh, in the switch. So, this new rule or uh, this uh, we did with this add flow command uh, in the data path the new rule is being installed uh, inside the switch. Uh, so, then we are making a packet out uh, event. So, this packet out event will actually send the uh, information from the controller to the switch and uh, it will send that message to the data path uh, from the data path. So, that way, uh, so it has its own construct you have to learn that what are the different functions or different classes which are being available in the mini net and accordingly try to uh, learn this program. So, uh, uh, so uh, I will suggest you to explore this further to explore this code uh, uh, if you are familiar with the python language and uh, start uh, with playing with this kind of code. And if you are not familiar with um, uh, python language do not worry there are other controller as well. So, for example, there are this open daylight controller which is written in java you can try with those controller as well. Uh, so, uh, you can choose your uh, controller which is preferable to you and uh, start playing with that. Uh, so, that is uh, something. Um, uh, we wanted to discuss uh, in this particular class. Uh, so, uh, hope you got an idea about uh, how to uh, process this uh, entire thing uh, and run a STN controller in your local machine. Uh, so, uh, I will I will uh, suggest you to play with uh, this mini net emulator platform and the different kind of protocol that you are learning execute it on top of that. So, you can even execute a uh, socket programming from this individual host just like we have executed the ping application. You can run your socket programming application and run it there. So, explore it uh, further. So, hopefully you will get a nice understanding or nice insight of this uh, network protocol stack. So, thank you all for attending this class.